Well, I thought that today I would um, do a little history on my music, uh, something to leave behind for my kids, grandkids, anybody who's interested. So um, I want to talk a little bit about how I got interested in, in music and then at the same time uh, this will lead into uh, some music for you. So I've always been interested in music and I came from a family of musical background. My mother was my greatest inspiration. She, um, she sang opera. She had the most wonderful, beautiful voice. I guess I can most probably correlate it to the voice of Jeanette McDonald. If she's a very, from way back times, but if you've ever heard her or went to YouTube and listened to the voice of Jeanette McDonald, she was my mother's voice. My mother sang both uh, English and Spanish. She also sang Italian. And uh, she loved to sing in Italian. She had the most wonderful um, movement when she was singing in Italian and in Spanish. Spanish being a very poetic language, then uh, the words always came out so wonderful. My mother wrote many songs in Spanish. She wrote some in English too, which she wrote for my, my grand, for her grandkids, my children. And, um, but she wrote some lovely, lovely songs in Spanish, which I was able to capture on video um, many years before she died. So in our home, uh, my earliest rememberings, I was four years old when my mother snapped the first picture of me dancing. And uh, I, I also not only did I love music, but I love music in the sense of dancing. So at age five, I, my earliest remembrances were that I had one of those little pianos. Uh, and uh, at a certain time of the day, the Liberace program came on TV. It was black and white, of course, and he came out in his coattails and uh, he sat down at a beautiful grand piano that had a candelabra on it and uh, he flipped his tails before he sat down and then he would play some of the most beautiful songs I'd ever heard. And he played them with such agility and, and just beautiful. And so he was the person that I, I first loved as uh, my favorite in, in music. I aspired to be like him in piano. At age seven, when I started into school, actually, um, well, I started age six, but age seven, I was second grade, and that's where I started taking piano lessons in school. The school was offering a, uh, a room that had a piano teacher, Mrs. Martin, and uh, that way students could take lessons during recess time, during lunch time, before school, after school. It was kind of like a, a built-in system to the, the school. This made it very easy for my mom because of the fact that we didn't have a car in those days. And uh, the first instrument that she wanted me to learn was actually the accordion. And uh, the only thing was that uh, she could not find any accordion teachers that uh, w were in the area where we lived. And if she did find any, they weren't willing to come to our house for the lessons. We would have to go to them. Not having a car made it very difficult, and of course now you add to that toting along an accordion uh, on a bus, that made things even worse. I'm going to add to that. Also at that time I had uh, rheumatic fever, which meant that uh, most of the time uh, my, my joints ached a lot. I missed a lot of school. Uh, I didn't just miss one or two days. Sometimes it was more like two or three weeks of school at a time. So this was a setback for me educationally because while other kids were learning to, 
divide, multiply, subtract, and all of that stuff, I was in pain at home. So when we did get, um, I did start the piano lessons with Mrs. Martin. I used to go in either at recess or at lunchtime. Um, my mother rented a piano, an upright, from a uh, store that was in downtown San Francisco. And so I had a piano at home and uh, my time consisted of going to school, coming home, changing from my school uniform, putting on my, my home clothes, if you will, and uh, then uh, doing any homework that I had and then after that doing uh, my piano practice. So doing my piano practice was easier than doing my homework because since I had missed so much school, uh, while other kids were being sent home with the uh, math homework, arithmetic as we called it, uh, I was having a very difficult time with my long division, short division, and stuff like that. So, um, and I say that I had an easier time with music rather than my schoolwork, but actually, in fact, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was not actually that way. The music uh, was there, but I wasn't learning it the way I should be learning it, mainly because I, I feared the um, piano teacher. So I took lessons for 10 years, and I can safely say that after 10 years of taking piano lessons, that the most that I learned from the teacher was to count the, the notes C, D, E, F, G, or F, A, C, E, or every good boy does fine. And you figure out the first letter of each one of those. And that was the scale that we used. So um, when learning a piece, if I didn't get the notes right, if I hit the wrong notes, uh, the teacher was sitting next to me and she maintained a ruler, a wooden ruler in one hand. And uh, if I got the notes wrong, she would proceed to wrap me on the hands uh, because I had hit the wrong notes. Uh, and if I made the mistake more than once or twice, then she would uh, take her hands and press down on my fingers into the keys. And that hurt because they're you know, we're talking little hands here of a seven-year-old and the force of a big woman. So um, that hurt. And uh, don't ask me how I lasted 10 years with her taking piano lessons. I will tell you that at the end of 10 years of taking piano lessons, I finally found the courage to tell my mother that I didn't want to take piano lessons anymore, to which she questioned me, wanted to know why. And for 10 years, I had kept this secret that the teacher was abusing me in the sense of hitting my hands, be, you know, twisting my fingers, uh, hitting me with the ruler on my hands and, um, you know, scaring the daylights out of me. And so I had managed to keep these things quiet from my mom. Maybe I thought that I was going to get in trouble. Um, I don't know. You know, what goes through the thoughts of a, of a child? You're afraid that you're going to be, going to be the one that's going to get in trouble, right? So, uh, at that point, when uh, I told my mother these things, and it just, it, it did came out as a flood, and it was shocking to her to hear that, and uh, immediately she stopped me from taking the lessons and that was pretty much the end of my piano lesson uh, piano lessons with this teacher 10 years 10 years and in that time uh, I cannot tell you that I can read a note in fact when um, notes are presented to me I see the scale I know the treble clef I know the bass clef those are simple things, but to read the notes, the little dots with the little sticks there, and to know I can tell you that they go up or they go down, uh, even though I know 
that the spaces are F-A-C-E and the lines are every good boy does fine or whatever they are, I cannot correlate them to match my fingers. Okay, I see the notes, but it doesn't, my mind is blocked, I won't read them. And so, uh, because I can't read the notes, then I can't play the notes. So you're probably thinking, well, how in the world did I ever learn to play piano? Well, um, I learned to play piano out of fear, basically. I was terrified of the teacher, and uh, because I was terrified of her, um, when she would be playing the piece through in slow motion, I would be absorbing with my eyes how she played it, and the sounds, I would absorb them with my ears. So as not to um, not do it, I would do it, but I was basically, I was imitating the teacher. So I was imitating by sight, by what I could see, and I was imitating by sound, what I could hear. And maybe this uh, developed my ear for music. Maybe I had uh, the ear for music all along. But one thing is sure, that the notes on the paper never have translated into anything that I can understand. So I can be looking at the notes, but um, ask me to play them, and I can't do it. Can't do it. I just, um, I lock up. I lock up, and my mind shuts down, and, um, and that's the end of it. Okay? So, I want to move on from this subject. Anyway, that was, uh, that was my beginnings in music, in piano, and um, nevertheless, I have always loved to play uh, the piano. I have always loved music. Um, I've always loved to dance, ever since I was a little girl. And uh, <clears throat> so after these uh, 10 years of piano lessons, then uh, I went into, I went into junior high and uh, into high school. In junior high, I was in the choir, uh, the school choir, and uh, so I enjoyed from the singing portion of what I like to do there. When I got into high school, I also did uh, the choir, and uh, our school put out a production, Camelot, to which I was able to be one of the fair maidens of the, um, of the court of Camelot. So that was, uh, always had music in my life. After I got out of high school and I was married then to my first husband, um, music was always in the background of my life. I heard it, I was up to date on who was singing what, uh, but um, it, wasn't, it wasn't really played a lot in my house, mainly because I, I, my marriage was very regimented style, and so it was very quiet. Any kind of noises and stuff like that disturbed him, and that meant any kind of noise. So the music was always uh, whatever I could hear on the radio if I was in the car by myself. The music was always in my heart. So it did not. I did not let that to put a damper on things. Um, my first love. Um, the first time I heard classical music, classical music, I was about uh, 14 years old, and uh, I played it almost nonstop uh, as a teenager. Classical music was, I think, my, my very first love, and having taken uh, about a year's uh, worth of ballet lessons in... Um, when I was little, then the ballet and the classical just kind of, you know, just kind of gelled together. So I did stop taking the ballet lessons after a year because of my rheumatic fever. Um, I would take lessons and then I would, I would be in pain after that because of the, the joints, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, um, I have to say I, I attribute all of my musical skills uh, to my mom because she had a magnificent singing voice, 
wonderful singing voice, whether she was singing for real or whether she was singing for play or being silly. She always had a beautiful voice singing. It was very wonderful, very, very angelic voice. And um, my mom, from what I remember when I was little, very little, uh, that um, she apparently sang on in San Francisco radio. Uh, at the time, they had a program that was meant for the GIs. And uh, so she would sing songs that she could sing in English and then of course she also sang some of the popular songs that were Italian songs um, the Dean Martin type songs Volare and uh, um, some of the other ones um, but uh, she sang those on the uh, GI station for uh, the radio station for the GIs and uh, so my mom had a wonderful voice of course, my mother and my father, they met on the dance floor. And uh, from what I understand, from what my father had told me, that she was she was a good dancer. She could jitterbug as good as anybody. And so I think that my uh, dancing skills may have come from that, that direction as well. My mom could sing. My mom could dance. And uh, my mom had a great sense of humor. So... She had great love for music, and I think that's where my love for music came. Now, we move to present day. Uh, we're talking now, we're in 2017. And uh, actually, let me go back just a few years. Uh, we'll go back to 20, 2005, 2005, 2006. Uh, I met my husband, Dale, in 2005. And um, somewhere between 2005 and 2007, um, he discovered that uh, we both like polka music on the accordion. And he had said that uh, one of his dreams was to um, learn to play the accordion. So one day, one day he went out and uh, he found himself an accordion on eBay, a little red one. And uh, he was all excited about getting this great, beautiful uh, accordion, this cherry-colored accordion. And so um, he proceeded to self-teach himself. And um, he, he, he did a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit. Uh, and um, the thing is, you know, a little bit is a little bit. So he would work on it, and then he would put the accordion in away in the closet after a few months, maybe he might pull it out, and it was kind of like a starting over again, over and over again, every time. And uh, one day, he decides that maybe he says, this accordion is too small for me. That's the little red one. And so he, he realized that accordions come in different sizes. They come in a full size, uh, they come in three quarter size, they come in half size, they come in children's size, and so I don't think he was aware of that when he made his first purchase. So now we have this little red accordion that really doesn't fit his, his fingers because he has large hands and, and of course large hands have large fingers. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, he went looking for another accordion and uh, this time he found another one. So he came to me and he says, I found the accordion for me. I know this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. I says, well, how do you know that? He says, well, he says, let me show you. And he showed me. And the accordion that he was looking at had his name on it, Dale, right in the front of the accordion. Beautiful, beautiful accordion. He says, this is it. This is the one. Sure enough. So he got the accordion. We were excited. And so he began st doing his little closet lessons again. And um, once again, he would go around, get started, go around, and, and uh, he'd come to a, a wall, at which point the accordion would go back in the closet, and then uh, it would sit for a few months. So that was back in 2007, okay? So now fast forward to 2016, which was last year. Well, between 
2007 and 2016, a lot of things happened. We moved from uh, Linwood to Kennewick. We opened our own dance business. Um, we did a lot of stuff. We, we were there for since two, from 2010 to 2013. Um, so we did a lot of stuff with our business. Then we decided uh, that we were going to semi-retire and we moved to Carrywood, Idaho. We lived there another three years. And uh, the accordion never came out of the closet during that time because uh, Dale had other obligations that had come up. It came kind of sort of stuck with the, the purchase of the house. Um, he kind of inherited a problem that was there, but we didn't know about it until, until we were in the house. So the, the accordion never came out of the closet. And um, when we finally sold the house in Carrywood and then we moved to Newport in May of 2016, then uh, once we spent a few months getting everything put together in the house and now, you know, we're looking around, what are we gonna do? What? So <clears throat> being that we live about an hour and 15 minutes north of Spokane, um, as we were putting things away, he says, you know, he says, maybe I will, maybe I'll start playing my accordion again. I was like, okay. But this time he did things a little bit different. So this time he, he um, looked to see if there were any accordion teachers who were the closest. As it turns out, he found the accordion teacher in in uh, Spokane and um, uh, the teacher Patricia very 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 talented very knowledgeable uh, woman um, she took him on as her student and um, we actually agreed that I would take lessons with him since um, we still had the other little red accordion and he had his Dale accordion well now we we could both play now, um, I have never, ever, before touching that accordion, I had never, ever, ever, ever played an accordion. So my skills were limited to whatever I could do with the piano. And what I could do with the piano was mostly hear, by hearing. I can play the piano. Uh, I can play fairly good with the piano, um, but I can't read a note, right? Remember that? Okay. So anyway, um, I decided that he, he says, well, maybe we could take lessons together. We're both beginners. So it's like, sure. Okay. Yes. Sounds great. So we did. We signed up for the first month and uh, the first month was, was good. It was good for both of us because we learned the proper handling of the accordion and the do's and don'ts and, and, uh, it was it was good. It was good to know, you know, what you shouldn't do, what you should do, what to look for, and stuff like that. So, um, it came time for the second month, and that was when we were taking lessons once a week, by the way. So it came time for uh, the second month, and it was time to start reading the notes. And I noticed that for Dale, uh, reading of the notes came much easier. Uh, but the first time that the notes were presented to me, as I would be looking at a sheet of, of music, just like looking at a sheet of piano music, um, my mind went blank. And uh, I would try to play the notes, and I couldn't. It was just one big blur. My mind did not want to accept what I was looking at. So thinking that maybe I was just nervous a little bit, then I, I took the notes home. But trying to practice the notes at home became impossible. Again, my mind would not receive the notes. Uh, it was like a total blackout, total rejection of, of what was in front of me. I couldn't do it. So it was very frustrating and uh, over the over the next few weeks, uh, I saw that Dale was progressing in his reading of the notes and getting the reading of the notes to the actual playing of the
the bass hand, which was what he was learning. And um, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. So feeling frustrated as I was and not understanding what was going on with me, it took me all these years to figure out that, that uh, somehow back with that piano teacher, uh, there was a block. I put a block on learning to read uh, from sheet music. So anyway, um, I decided that the best thing to do would be to step out and to allow Dale to take continue taking lessons. This is what he wanted to do, and uh, I wanted him. I wanted to see him succeed. So I started off by giving him uh, for his birthday, which which uh, came up, a month's worth of uh, accordion lessons. Generally, the accordion lessons are 30 minutes long, but I decided that, you know, I'm going to give him a month's worth of one-hour lessons. So that's like two lessons in one each time. Uh, I think that was probably a very good thing because now here we are just over, just a little bit over a year, a year and a month, a year and two months. And so Dale is still doing it. He's still taking lessons, and, uh, and, and he has come a long way from his self-teaching techniques, I'm glad to say, and he's loving every minute of it. So as for myself, um, once he went back, you know, to continue the lessons and I stepped out, then I, I don't know what prompted me to want to continue playing the accordion, handling it, touching it, um, I pretty much felt that I knew my way around the piano and there really was not any hope for me with the accordion but but you know something in 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 me uh said you know just 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 try some of your favorite pieces with one hand so and so it began so um since we both liked the polkas there was uh I started off with a polka piece and I wouldn't say it was exactly easy, but because it was my favorite and because I consider myself to be a determined person to do uh, things when I want to do them uh, and to make it happen, then this was my challenge. And so I took my, my own challenge head on and I uh, started to learn that first piece. So uh, one of the first things that I encountered in... Uh, starting to play the accordion was, well, of course, I couldn't play the left hand, could not, couldn't feel the little dots, the little diamonds, the, 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 the left hand. I just couldn't get it going. It just, it was like, might as well just chop my hand off. Couldn't do it. But, uh, but then I thought, well, let me try the right hand. And so, um, um, uh, the first obstacle for me was that I learned when you're playing with the accordion, you can't really look down at the keys like you would a piano. You're playing and, and you look down and you see your fingers. This is going up this way. So unless you have a neck that you can stretch out and turn it around to see where you're at, all you're feeling is the keys up and down, up and down. And so you have to learn how to find the keys without looking. Okay, so uh, that was the first challenge. And uh, I would say that it probably took me maybe the first month of, of doing it by myself, just me, me on my own, to get comfortable with the keys. And that was, of course, about a year ago. Uh, today, now we're in 2017, um, I can't look at the keys to find them. I get confused now if I try to look at the keys and see where I'm at. Now I am very comfortable with not looking at the keys and, um, and I know where they are. I, I guess it's because, as I say to Dale, I can hear the keys in my head before I play them. I know how many keys to go down to find the note that I want. Sometimes I'm off by a key, but um, m more often than not, I am able to uh, find the key that I want. I can usually hear it before I play it. 
So now, so that being said, um, that being said, I, I want to, I want to say this. I don't know anything about playing an accordion. I have my God-given gifts from my skills from my mother, listening to her, listening to her fine-tuning her, her musical ear, which helped me to learn, listening to her, watching her. And so, <clears throat> but as far as my playing the accordion goes, I am totally clueless, okay? Don't have a clue. Don't know what I'm doing. All I can tell you is if I hear a particular song, I can tell you right off the bat if I am able to play that song or not. It doesn't matter. It could be an easy song or a hard song. Um, if I hear the song, I can pretty much know, and don't ask me how, I can know that I, I can play that song. You know, I might have to practice it just a little bit, but I can play that song. Uh, or I can, if I hear it, I might think, mm, nope. I don't think I can play that song, but, you know, maybe in another few months as I get a little bit more more familiar with my perfection of the keys, I might be able to do it. So, I do have some songs that, uh, what I consider extremely difficult, and those are my goal songs, and uh, so every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll play them and uh, try to keep up with them and sometimes I'll break it down and try to play a section or the sections that I can play. And eventually, uh, this is how I learn by listening and, and sometimes watching that person who's playing the songs. So, But most importantly, what I want to add here is that, honestly, I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, I am a wannabe accordionist, um, and... I feel that what I have and the ability that I have to play, uh, the ability to play what I can play, I feel is, is truly a gift. It's a gift from God. And so um, I always want to say this to people, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a clue. Um, don't ask me how I know what to do. I don't, I just don't. All I know is I sit down, and I play. And so this brings to my mind always and very clearly the phrase, the, the, uh, the Bible scripture that is in the Bible, Philippians 4.13, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's my motto, and I'm sticking to it. So anyway, I wanted you to have this history of uh, my music before I get to playing um, so that you can know what it's like, okay? Not to know how to read a note, but to be able to play. Therefore, I'm going to end this video and I'm going to say one thing. I play for the glory of God and that you may be blessed in your listening and that it may cause you to think that God has blessings for you, and he has gifts for you. And you should seek God first, that he may give you the wonderful blessings and wonderful gifts that he has stored for you. Okay? So, that's all for now. You will receive uh, soon the different uh, groupings of songs that I'm going to play. I want to do a special group of all the songs my mother used to listen and sing to, uh, another grouping of my favorite songs that I like to play, um, a grouping of all the polkas that I've learned, and maybe a miscellaneous group. We'll see. Okay, so there you go, and signing out for right now. Bye-bye.